everyone, I am Emily McQuiggan. I'm the team programmer at Fredrickson Library, and I'm here today with Deanne Williamson and Emily Young, and this is Quarantine Talk. So we're going to talk today about some of the things that we've been up to in the last couple weeks that we think that um, our teen and tween patrons might find interesting. Hi, Deanne. Hi, Emily. Hi. Hi, Emily. Hi, Hi Deanne. <laughs> So just like last time, we are going to start with a quiz. So can you guys right. see my Ready. Yep. Yes. Okay. So the quiz is, is it, um, is it a Shakespeare quote or is it a random Tumblr user? Oh my gosh. Oh boy. I don't know how good I'm going to be at this. <laughs> So um, I know a lot of our teen patrons are reading some Shakespeare right now, getting ready for school to start back up. I know a lot of um, like Hamlet and Romeo and Juliet uh, are often required reading. So I thought it'd be fun for us to do this. So our first quote is, okay. God may judge you, but his sins outnumber your own. So do you think that is Shakespeare or Tumblr? I don't know. I, I'm i leaning towards Tumblr. I feel like if it were Shakespeare, the words would be more like jumbled. That's what, that is exactly what I thought. Yeah. All right, so let's try Tumblr. And eventually it will click. Well, Tumblr was correct, so good job, guys. <laughs> um, so our next question is, hell is empty and all the devils are here. Is that Shakespeare or Tumblr? I, I'm, I feel like I'm leaning toward Tumblr again, but I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, I think it could be either, but if you want to guess Tumblr, that's fine with me. Yeah, that's, what, that's my guess. I don't, I have no reasoning, but that's what I'm going with. Tumblr was incorrect. Oh, um, man. So that is from The Tempest. Uh, oh. It's spoken by Ariel, and I guess he's quoting Ferdinand. Uh, oh. So it is not Tumblr, although it is often quoted on Tumblr. <laughs> oh. All right, our next one is to become God is the loneliest achievement of them all. Tumblr or Shakespeare? This is really hard. This is much harder than boy <laughs> bands. Yeah, I knew some of the boy band ones. <laughs> well, it's so funny because I did it. I did the quiz myself before, and I thought it was so easy. <laughs> really? Yeah. Um, I mean, I was it, it was too easy. <laughs> I have not read Shakespeare since high school, so yeah. I also, never used Tumblr. I don't know if that matters, but like, it's. Uh, probably not. I think I'm just bad at this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going with Shakespeare on this one. These are just blind guesses now. So let's follow that. <laughs> I was confident the last time. That is incorrect. It is oh my gosh. a Tumblr post. Seriously? Um, so uh. Uh, that one is a Tumblr post re um, recounting a dream that their mom had. Oh. <laughs> so... Okay. Uh, all right, next is, do I look like the kind of man who dies? Um. I'm just trying to think who would post that on Tumblr. Like, I don't <laughs> That's, yeah. I would lean maybe towards Shakespeare, but. Yeah. I'm sorry to say you guys are incorrect. I'm really bad at this. That is a number it's tumble. Not a quiz for us. <laughs> um, and it's a dream about the musician Prince. Are these all dreams? No, just okay. some. <laughs> Man. All no. right. So <laughs> the next quote is: "One man in his time plays many parts." Definitely Shakespeare. Yep. Yep, you guys are correct. Uh, that is from the play As You Like It. Okay, we got one. Yay! All right, next is what? You egg? 
I bet that's Shakespeare just because there's some weird stuff like that. Yeah, that was my that was my go to. Yeah. You are correct. Uh, it is from Macbeth. Ah. Shakespeare has some truly excellent insults. And I believe we have a book at the library that has a collection of all of his insults. That's great. Um, I love it. So I think if you just search uh, Shakespeare insults into our catalog, you should find it. Um, if you have trouble, just let me know and I will help you find all the Shakespearean insults that you need. <laughs> all right, so <laughs> next is, you are not worth the dust which the rude wind blows in your face. That also sounds like Shakespeare to me, but I don't know. What do you think, Deanne? I don't know. I just feel like only Shakespeare would describe wind as rude, you know, like yeah, that was, that was, yeah. Yeah. Let's go with that. You are correct. That is from King Lear. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't imagine like, uh, why someone would post that on Tumblr. <laughs> The internet is a large place, and there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So our next quote is: "Then become the dirt I walk on." I mean, that could be from anybody's dream on Tumblr. I think. <laughs> it sounds like a dream. Uh, um, I don't know. Let's go Tumblr on this one. You are correct again. So all right, we're is, all now. Uh, it is from a quote. Uh, somebody said, remember to drink water. Another person replied, no. And then that person <laughs> said, then become the dirt I walk on. Oh my. That, they went deep. They did. So remember to drink water, everybody. Remember to drink water. All right. So our next quote is, you linguistic delinquents who fear neither God nor man. I think Tumblr. I kind of, I was thinking, I went Shakespeare first because of the language, but then I was like, no, there's some, that's definitely like a comment to go back on a comment or something. I don't know. Yeah. You are correct. It is a Tumblr uh, from a Tumblr post. So it is a rant that somebody did. Uh, mm -hmm about how, you know, in the South, they refer to every kind of soda as Coke. I don't know if you're aware of this. So like in the South, like, instead of saying like, can I have a Sprite? You'll say, can I have a Coke? And Isn't that confusing for like, for honestly, like- Honestly, I find it very confusing and I do yeah. not understand it. So I guess they are linguistic delinquents. Who That's so funny. <laughs> wow. So uh, that is everything on this quiz. Uh, that was fun. Yeah, we, so we, need, we had a slow start, but then we got into it. Yeah, you guys did great. I think you got about half of them. Yep. I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, Emily, do you want to go first, telling us about what you've been up to? Sure. Why not? All right. So, um, I'll start with reading since that's usually my favorite category. Um, I finally finished from last uh, time to update you guys. I finally finished a series of unfortunate events and I really forgot like how it ended and what happened in the last book. And of course I cried, you know, and I am so excited to finish the Netflix series and see like how they do the ending and stuff. Um, so now I'm working on a book that I've been hearing stuff about and has gotten really good reviews. Um, maybe uh, you guys have read it called Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. I've seen the cover. I can picture it, but I can't think of, I don't think I've read it. Yeah. So normally I feel like I'm not sure when it came out. I think it's relatively new, but normally I don't like jumping on like the popular shows or titles like right when they come out. But in the case of this one, I just, um, I'm reading it for a book club, and I just think it's fabulous so far. I, I'm only on chapter 10, I think, um, which is probably like, I don't know, maybe a quarter of the way through. Uh, but it's, it, 
I don't, I don't know if the author is Scottish, but the narrator is Scottish and I'm listening to the audiobook on Libby and the accents are amazing. And like, so the main character, she like struggles with social skills. Um, and so she just like, she just says whatever she's thinking and she's like a, a loner, you know, she doesn't really get out much. And the story is her kind of branching out a little bit. Um, and I just think it's great. So I would highly recommend that uh, so far. And um, what else am I doing? So for things I'm watching, um, <laughs> from a friend, I discovered this very bizarre and hilarious show on Netflix called Kath and Kim. It's Australian. Um, and the two, like, main actresses i think they're also the producers and writers they're the same age but they play mother and daughter and i think it's set like in in current day but they dress and act like they're in like the 80s like they're always wearing like like richard simmons kind of outfits like with <laughs> like the workout gear and it's so strange but um it's really funny and um i would recommend that and um, something else that's kind of different that I've been watching is on Instagram, actually. Um, it's an account that I somehow found. And it's a woman in China who, it's just like videos of her doing like extremely peaceful activities. And it's like beautiful um, photography. So she like, she does things on farms. Like she, she'll like be like cutting down bamboo or um, she'll be like making like meals. And it's, it's just silent. Like there's usually some like rainwater or like natural sounds in the background. And it's so relaxing. Like if I'm feeling stressed or I just need a minute to like take a break, usually they're about like five minutes long, the video. So I'll just go to her page and pop it on. Um, if anybody's interested in that, I'll give you her username. So I think her name is Liziki. Um, so her username is CN. And then her name, which is L-I-Z-I-Q-I. -I. So like Sin Liziki. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been doing. Is that like an ASMR thing? I, I don't know if it's supposed to be. Like I think maybe it could be used for that. Um, but I don't know. It's just an extremely sort of relaxing um, page. So um, on that note, there's also this new app that I've been using. I know there's a lot of different apps for um, like relaxation and meditation and things, mm -hmm. um, but none really stuck with me. Um, but I really do like this new one that I've tried called Insight Timer. Um, it's not like one of the popular ones, but once I downloaded and looked around, like it has so, it has thousands upon thousands of meditations and it has like courses and workshops you can take for free. Um, and there's like all sorts of categories, like for sleep, um, just for like relaxing music. Um, what else is there? Uh, there, they have like a daily section. So I plan to make it like, it's helpful for making it like a daily routine, um, to, you know, try like a, a quick meditation. So that's been one of my goals lately to try to work on. And, um, yeah, I'm excited to, to discover more of that. So that's what I have this time. Thanks for sharing, Emily. That's good. Awesome. <laughs> and Deanne, what have you been up to? All right. So um, I, I can't remember what I mentioned last time, which is terrible. Um, but I, I felt like, I think I, I mentioned a book that I was reading that was sort of deep. It was, um, I can't even remember the name of it now, A Lot Like Love. And um, I, it was, it was one of those that you put it down and you just felt very heavy, like, Ooh, okay. That was a lot. So then I, I kind of was looking for something that was more light, um, fluffy, you know, something like that. And I, um, just finished the book tweet cute. Um, I saw it on the shelf at the library and I was like, yep, that's what I need. I need something with the word cute in the title. Um, <laughs> and it's exactly that it's very, I mean, there's literally nothing, deep about it. And I just loved it. It's about, um, 
two characters that are in high school and um, one, she runs the Twitter for her mom's like big burger company. And then he runs the Twitter for his parents, like small deli and they get into like a Twitter battle. And it's just, it's just one of those that you're just like, Oh, like I closed it and I went, hmm, that's a cute one. I liked it. And you know, it's just kind of like a nice soft thing to read if you, if you need, you know, to take your mind off of things for a little bit. Um, so that's what I've been reading. So I need to find something else to read because I just finished that yesterday. Um, two shows that I watched on, well, one is a movie, one is a show on Netflix. I can't remember if I've talked about these before, um, but I really, really liked them. The movie is called The Half of It um, on Netflix. And um, first of all, I just, I loved when I pick up, or it's like a YA movie and I haven't heard of any of the actors or actresses. Um, it's not like the popular ones that are coming back. It, I did, hadn't heard of anybody. So it's about a girl who, um, her, her parents immigrated here and um, she basically has to, I don't know, become an adult uh, a lot quicker than she needs to be. And so she works all the time and she writes papers for her classmates. Um, and that's how she gets involved with this one guy who wants her to write a letter to his crush. Um, and it just sort of follows that. And it sounds, the way I'm making it sound, it sounds very fluffy, but um, it's it's really not. It's not one of those like, like shallow type of movies. Um, there's a lot of deepness to it and I really liked it. So that's called The Half of It. Um, and then the other show that I, um, that was, I think it has like 10 episodes is um, Never Have I Ever um, on Netflix. It was produced and I think written by, could be wrong, um, by Mindy Kaling um, from The Office, who I love. Um, so basically that is very, it's very typical YA, like it follows this girl through high school. Um, but it, it, it's very relatable in so many different ways because it's not just her story that they're sharing. It's all of her friends too. Um, so basically it starts with her father passing away um, and she never really deals with the grief of it. And it follows like the repercuss repercussions of that um, over the 10 episodes. It's hilarious at times. It's sad at times. Um, I think I watched it in like a weekend. It was great. Um, I'm really hoping they make another season because I really liked it a lot. Uh, oh, plus the cast is like super diverse um, and I just really liked it. So that was called Very Never Have cool. I Ever. I also have you really love that show. Oh, yay. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, they have to make a second season. I mean, I will petition if I need to. <laughs> yeah. I know we have a lot of our teens are fans of The Office and 30 Rock and stuff like that. And so if you like those kind of things, the show is definitely for you. Yeah. It's kind of got like, I feel like it's got like a similar sense of humor, but it's, mm -hmm. um, it's teens instead of like adults, like those shows are grown up. So right. uh, yeah, this one you'll probably relate more to. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. I mean, if, if you don't find something to relate with, with the main character, like there's so many other stories that you're like, oh yeah, that's true. Um, so I really liked that one. Um, kind of along the same lines of the like fluffy book that I've been, that I read. Um, I, I find that, you know, I, I read the news and I, I'm informed about the world and then I just need to like watch something else or to take my mind off of something. Um, so I, a couple months ago when we were deep in quarantine and I downloaded TikTok. Now I know that there's like you know, scandal behind it. But I, I'm so glad I did because I found someone that I love to follow. And um, he's a teacher, which is probably why he showed up on my page. Um, but his name is Mr. Hamilton. And if TikTok goes away, I'm, I hope he makes like an Instagram or a YouTube or something because he is the most positive person. I know that if I, if I watch his videos, it's going to make my day. Um, and he does, he does like silly stuff, but he also um, recently went on a, a road trip and he called it like the ham road trip or something. And he, people were Venmoing him money 
And he was like, well, I don't want to keep it for myself. Um, so he was going on this road trip and he would leave like big tips for people at, at rest stops and waitresses and things like that. Um, and I, it's just one of those that you can tell that he is just very positive, but he also shares like his struggles too. Um, and yeah, so I, I, I think it's just Mr. Underscore Hamilton and he's hilarious. And if you need something to watch or, you know, take your mind off of something, look him up. <laughs> Sounds um, oh, it, it is. It is. I, I, I feel like I know him because I watch his videos all the time, um, which is nice. He's on anything. Um, like anything besides TikTok because I don't have a TikTok and I don't know if I'm ready to join that world yet and take on another social media. Yeah, it's a lot. It's, I mean, it definitely can be a time suck because you're, you know, when you go on Instagram <clears throat> or Facebook or something like at one, at some point you get to the end of the new stuff where TikTok, it's just constant stream of things. I mean, the kids, the teens probably watching this are like, duh, like, <laughs> you're late to the game. We've all been on TikTok for years, but um, yeah, I know they're like, oh, we're done with that already. Um, and I think, I mean, there's definitely things to be cautious about on it. Um, which is why I just started like following people that I like, and then I go to their pages. So, um, I tend to just like filter it that way. So I'm not, I don't know, getting into things that I don't really need to be watching. Um, so yeah. Uh, one last thing is super, super random. Um, but now that we all have been obviously wearing our masks um, and, you know, it, when we're going out and about, um, this is something that I've struggled with too. And I maybe people watching this have struggled with it too. I realized that like my skin is breaking out where my mask is. Um, and so I mean, which is understandable. I mean, you're putting something so close to your face and you're breathing in and out and um, it's rubbing on your chins and in your chin and things like that. Um, so I, I looked it up and I, I found some tips. Uh, if anyone else is having that same thing, um, especially those of you who are um, maybe working a waitress job and you have to wear a mask and it's hot. Um, one thing is to like, if those of you who wear makeup, like to limit the makeup use behind the mask. Um, if you still wear it, just don't wear as much um, where the mask would be. Um, and then also, obviously, if it's a reusable mask, to wash it as soon as you're done. Um, I definitely um, have struggled with that a little bit because I'm like, oh, I'll just stick it in my car. And then I, you know, grab it the next time. So I've, hope, I've been, you know, coming in, putting it right, you know, in the, the washer or the sink and hand washing it. Um, so that I make sure that it's clean because you definitely want something clean on your face. Um, and then I try to wash my face as soon as I get home um, and take off all the makeup that I have on. Um, I brought it downstairs just because in case I forgot to talk about it, but I use Cetaphil. Um, I know that as a teen, I would stand in the like face wash area and be like, what, what do I use? And I would grab the most abrasive things possible because I thought, I just need to scrub it all away where you really need to do the opposite and use things that are gentle. Um, so that's a super gentle one. I, I, it's fragrance free. Um, and I wash my face and, you know, just, you know, with like warm water and then, you know, I'm ready for the next day. So just, you know, if you do have to wear a mask and well, you shouldn't wear a mask, but if you have to wear a mask at work and you have to wear it for a long period of time, um, you know, just take care of your skin because, you know, that's something that can, you know, hinder our self-esteem, um, especially those of you who are going back to school and things like that. So um, just something to think about. <laughs> That's a great take. Yeah. yeah. I woke up with like two new zits this morning like, mm -hmm. on the mask. Yeah. Well, so that's super helpful. Yeah. I, I mean, it's definitely, I mean, I never would have thought about that. And then, you know, I, at the library when I'm there for like five hours and I have my mask on, I don't notice it and it's fine. But then when I take it off, I'm like, Ooh, ugh. <laughs> like that. I need to go wash my face. <laughs> so yeah. I use, um, I've got these, um, um, face wash wipes that I use. Um, so if you are going to be out for a long day, that might be a good idea to keep mm -hmm. some of those on hand and then you can, you know, 
or if you're doing a long drive or something. Um, mine yeah. are great fruit scented. So uh, it always makes me happy. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, thank you, Deanne. That's a great no problem. <laughs> um, so the first thing I want to talk about is I just finished this morning reading a book called um, Binti by um, Nady Okadafor. Um, it's a science fiction book and it is about a young woman. Um, she's from um, Earth. She's uh, from a community in Africa and she's the first of her people to go to this like grand university in space uh, where like all different kinds of aliens from all over the galaxy go. And um, there's some mishaps along the way of her getting there and she has to kind of like become kind of like a leader and um, like use her like powers of like empathy and negotiation um, in order to create a more peaceful solution. Um, and it was just, it was really good. It was really, um, it was really well put together uh, novella. It was a short book. Um, so it's definitely a great, um, kind of like gateway into modern science fiction, if anybody's interested in that. And I know she does have some young adult books as well. Um, I believe the title of that is Akata Witch. Um, and um, I haven't read her YA yet, but I really loved Binti and I will definitely be checking out Akata Witch. So I definitely recommend that one. Um, the next thing I wanna talk about is the show on Netflix, it's called The Untamed. Have either of you heard of this? Mm -mm. Okay, so it is a, um, a Chinese epic story. Uh, I think it was originally a book and I believe it's YA. Um, and so it's all in Chinese. You have to read the subtitles if you don't speak Chinese. Um, and it is um, like an epic fantasy magic kind of story. So it's various different um, clans and houses battling for power. There's like this magical object that can do not great things. Um, but it's mainly about um, uh, this one family in particular. So it's two siblings and their adopted brother and kind of their role in this like epic story it's very if there are times where it feels very lord of the rings so mm -hmm. if you like lord of the rings you would probably like this um and there's like magical rabbits and like all kinds of like really fun stuff and like it's also like there are parts that are really really sad um and then you know there's parts that are very funny and it's just it's a great show i've been really enjoying it um it's nice because a lot of times when I watch TV, I'll kind of like half watch it and then like be on my phone or be like doing other things while I'm watching TV. So since this has the subtitles, I have to give it 100% of my attention. And um, it's just been really nice to have something like that to focus on. Um, and it's such like an engaging story. So, um, I definitely recommend it, especially if you like epic fantasy, like if you like Lord of the Rings, if you like Game of Thrones, um, this would definitely be the kind of story that you would be into. And then the last thing I want to talk about is Paper Mario. So um, you guys know I love to play video games. Uh, and the latest Paper Mario, I believe it's called Origami King. Um, just came out a couple weeks ago, so I've been playing a lot of Paper Mario. Um, so in Paper Mario, Mario is like a piece of paper. <laughs> so it's a video game, uh, this one's on the Switch. Um, and so, you know, Mario's like a little, little dude. And like all the backgrounds look like they're made of cardboard and paper and craft supplies. A lot of the villains are craft supplies. Like one of the first villains that you fight is a box of colored pencils. That's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's very fun. And um, the music's great. I've really been enjoying listening to the music while I play. Um, and, you know, like it's Mario. Like Mario is always fun and good. And um, 
your, you know, all the usual characters you love, the Goombas, Bowser, they're all, Luigi, they're all there. So um, uh, if you have a Switch and you're looking for a game to play, uh, you can definitely put many hours into Paper Mario. It is a lot of fun. That sounds like fun. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it's also um, like, it, so I've been playing Paper Mario. And then last week, uh, our grab and go bag that we did with the teens was um, recycled books. And so it was fun to be playing this game about origami and then do paper folding on my own because mm. uh, I made all kinds of like roses and stuff. Um, That's cool. Yeah. So uh, definitely recommend all of those things. That's awesome. Awesome. Does anybody have anything else they want to add? Not that I can think of. Oh. Well, we hope to see you all again soon at the library. Um, we have a couple more grab and go bags coming up for the rest of the summer. And then we're going to do more in the fall. Um, so keep your eye out for that. And um, as always, keep reading and uh, let us know if there's anything that you want us to talk about for our next quarantine talk. So have a good day, everybody. Difficult quizzes to take. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you have any good quizzes, let us know. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right. See you, everybody. Bye. Bye.